Hey guys, welcome to my new video. So with this new video, I kind of wanted to finally go over my whole art journey thus far. Um, all the way back starting when I was like 19 years old, which would have been like 2009 or so. Um, and then also kind of show work from back then all the way up until now, as well as sort of give advice on things I would do differently and all that kind of stuff. So it's gonna be kind of a longer video, I'm sure. Um, hopefully it won't go over like I don't know, 40 minutes or so, max. So I'll begin talking about uh, kind of the backstory when I started back in about 2009. So I was, um, I believe I was a sophomore or a junior in uh, college at uh, West Liberty University up in West Virginia. And so I was studying graphic design and I took drawing classes and stuff like that. Um, but I wasn't really learning as much as I wanted to. Didn't really even know what I wanted to do with um, my career after college or anything like that. I pretty much thought it would be near impossible to make a living doing drawing and stuff. I thought I would have to go into graphic design, which I still didn't even know a ton about. I thought it was going to be like laying out catalogs and things like that, which I don't find any appeal in personally but then as I was browsing the interwebs I came across this cool website called conceptart.org and um, it was really cool there was this whole community of sort of concept artists and illustrators um, posting um, their sketchbooks online so you could see not only their finished work but also sort of behind the scenes of how they improved and you could see people going from sort of zero ability all the way up to professional and kind of see how they got there. It was really inspiring. And I remember one guy in particular that I saw on conceptart.org was Dave Raposa. Um, and he would stream every day, like his studies from life, his painting and stuff. So I would check him out like every morning. And that kind of made me realize like illustration is a viable career path potentially and it sort of opened up a whole new world to me and so that site isn't really the same anymore most of those people are now just active on Facebook and stuff like that art station yeah so after I got inspired by all that I started you know getting books on anatomy and stuff like Bridgman and things like that and really started studying anatomy um, started doing still life painting and stuff like that it sort of gave me an idea of what the fundamentals were and how to go about studying them, kind of. And in my college classes, I learned, you know, a little bit of the fundamentals. We would do simple still lifes and things like that. But, you know, it still felt very limited. Um, we didn't really get nearly enough life drawing practice. I think in college, I only drew from the model maybe six times in total, maybe seven, which isn't nearly enough. So then around 2011, 2012, Dave Raposa and his friend uh, Dan Warren, they made these sort of challenges on their blog called Blood Sports, which was basically where you would enter your illustration to be critiqued by them, as well as show the studies that you had done um, beforehand in that week. That way, you know, you would have to show that you would actually done studies and applied them in order to improve and make a finished piece and that sort of showed me the whole you know study and then actually apply what you've learned from the studies instead of just doing studies or just working from your imagination exclusively so after college you know I still wasn't sure what to do exactly I still had a lot to learn of course um, and I kind of felt like I was being self-taught at that point you know everything I was learning was coming from the internet I didn't really have a you know mentor to kind of give me feedback and that's kind of the downside of you know being self-taught is that a lot of what you're studying you don't have somebody to tell you what you're doing wrong what you're doing right what you need to focus more on and stuff like that 
and so you spend a lot of your time making the same sort of mistakes or you may you know end up focusing too much on more advanced concepts like color theory before you've even really gotten your understanding of values down or know how to draw properly luckily though with the internet nowadays you can find people online to give you critique you can you know find facebook groups and hopefully find people that you trust in there and you guys can sort of critique each other or you could find an art director or an illustrator online to give you maybe a paid feedback session via skype or something so then sort of recently in 2017 i attended um the illustration academy in kansas city for three weeks which although it's not super cheap it's fairly affordable for what all you're getting out of it and it's a great experience that i totally recommend to everybody um and while i was out there i got to not only explore kansas city and meet cool new friends and all that stuff but i got to study under amazing artists such as george pratt jeffrey allen love carlo ortiz edward kinsella and like multiple others and that's something that's really difficult to find you know all in one place that much you know skill it's pretty crazy kind of felt surreal but definitely worth checking out for sure so that's you know kind of the the whole backstory condensed and everything and so kind of want to get into resources that i would recommend for people that are starting out or maybe even at an intermediate level still so any book by andrew loomis is going to be awesome i mean he's got books on perspective anatomy composition um just everything you can imagine he was an illustrator back in like the 40s but everything that is in his books is very like fundamental very solid information another great book for anatomy would be um george bridgman's books on anatomy are fairly good they're more like blocky construction kind of um ways of going about anatomy but um Figure Drawing, Design, and Invention is also a really good book. Um, I think the author's name is Michael Hampton, but yeah, that's definitely a really good book. So basic books on perspective, form, um, rendering would be How to Draw and How to Render by Scott Robertson, who's actually a teacher at Art Center or was a teacher there. But it's very, very informative books, definitely probably all you need on perspective and basic form rendering. If you want um, just a book to read about drawing that's not just about um, practical knowledge of how to draw, um, The Practice and Science of Drawing by Harold Speed is one that I definitely recommend. And then um, when it comes to color and lighting and stuff like that, James Gurney's book, Color and Light, is probably the best book on the topic. And if you're into like animation and stuff, um, the Animator Survival Kit is probably one of the best books on fan foundational like 2D animation stuff. I haven't actually gone through that book yet, but it's very highly recommended and I, I own it and I do want to go through it probably by next year or so. But. So one of the like websites that I would recommend would be the New Masters Academy website, which is got a ton of videos and reference photos and all kinds of 3d stuff but the instructors on there like steve houston are phenomenal to say the least so that's probably the only website you would need to learn all the foundations of drawing and painting if you want to get more into like illustration and stuff the people that run the illustration academy in kansas city they also have a site called the visual arts passage where you can take classes with those instructors online and that's definitely a great route to go if you want to take classes. Um, and if you want to get more into like concept art on the West Coast, you've got the Brainstorm Academy, Brainstorm School. I'm not sure if they have online classes, but they're located in, I think, Pasadena. That's going to be a, you know, a more affordable route than actually going to art school. And then if you just want a website that's got really basic fundamental exercises, um, I would recommend the Draw a Box website if it's still up. So now a word on actually learning and teaching yourself. So if you're going to be mostly self-taught, 
you really need to focus on the fundamentals constantly for at least probably a couple of years where you're really hitting it hard like you know practicing form rendering practicing basic shapes and perspective and all this kind of stuff you really want to get these fundamentals down i mean when it comes to painting mistakes 90 percent of your problems are probably going to be drawing issues so i can't stress it enough that you should fully understand perspective and how values work and all that kind of stuff so you know when you're starting out just you know really understand basic shapes set up like an egg or a simple white cube in front of you put one light source on it and draw it in grayscale with pencil or with ink wash or whatever digital painting whatever but really understand how the values work um, and learn to simplify your value structure um, this kind of stuff can be learned from scott robertson's how to draw book as well as um, andrew loomis's book successful drawing or creative illustration those books should definitely give you an understanding of how to go about studying those really basic things you know perspective really understand linear perspective which again you can get from how to draw that book and learn what atmospheric perspective is as well for once you get into things like you know rendering environments and you can even find atmospheric perspective in figures even so you know learn what that stuff is you know so once you've got like a basic grasp on the simple forms perspective and values and all that stuff i'd say you should learn anatomy if you ever want to do anything figurative like drawing people or portraits or whatever you definitely want to understand anatomy so you know learn the planes of the head and draw people from life as much as you can go to figure drawing workshops if possible uh, obviously study the anatomy book figure drawing design and invention and stuff like that the <clears throat> videos you'll find on the new masters academy have a ton of great anatomy reference videos and stuff like that so when you're starting to learn about color um, and lighting and all that stuff obviously james gurney's book color and light i've already said is a great resource but also mike acevedo a-z-e-v-e-d-o he has a gum road and on that gum road he's got a video about color and how light affects color and all that stuff and that's actually a really good video it's like a short video but it kind of explains how light affects color and it kind of opened my eyes to how to use the color wheel and how to think about lighting and so like all the while you're doing this all these studies i would also recommend keeping a sketchbook that you draw on every day um draw things from life in it draw things from imagination you know draw characters that you want to make up um practice drawing straight lines practice drawing c curves and s curves and circles and all that kind of stuff that's going to make you have a lot more control of your you know pen or whatever and that's going to come in really handy with um having good line quality in your work so i'd say you know after maybe a few months or weeks or a year maybe all those points you want to get feedback on what you're doing ask somebody that's a lot better than you just to give you feedback and see you know what you need to work on still and where your strengths are where your weaknesses are because you know when you're beginning you might not be able to see for yourself what's working and what's not working um, so it's definitely important to get feedback from somebody that you you know trust their opinion and also like after you've got like the really basic understanding of forms and things down start applying your studies you know so for example if you've just studied perspective try drawing um, a scene from your head in perspective. Um, if you've just studied anatomy for the day, try drawing a character. And then maybe try drawing um, with a photo reference after you've drawn the character of a similar pose and see, you know, what you could have improved in your imaginative drawing, things like that. And so now I'm gonna make a little slideshow of my work from probably even before 2009 when I was a complete beginner up until now and you're gonna see like how things have improved how they've changed and I'll voice that over and just talk about it as it goes 
All right, so in this screen, you can kind of see stuff from 2007, which was my last year in high school, till 2009, which was my pretty much sophomore year in college. So I was doing portraits here. I was studying basic still lifes. I was um, copying from the old masters, which is always, it's always a really good thing to do. Always study from the great masters, like, you know, um, Leonardo da Vinci, John Singer Sargent, people like that. Um, I was doing some, the portraits were mostly from photo reference. Um, and then the skulls, the pirates up there, those are from imagination. So of course, always do imaginative work as well to kind of apply your studies and have fun, you know. Um, but yeah, so let's see. This is 2010, so I must have been junior in college here. Um, I think that's some politician in the bottom left, obviously, for imagination, using reference, of course, though. Um, in the bottom middle, though, there's some life drawing from college. Um, one of the very few times we got to draw from the model. Um, it's always a very valuable time. Um, on the right, it's a portrait from imagination. On the top middle was a CD cover idea I had, which, uh, yeah, kind of weird, but and there's some fan art as well of Hades from Hercules in the top left. So yeah, there's a little bit more imaginative work in this one. Um, but yeah, I'm only showing, you know, a very few pieces from each kind of year. Um, just to give you a sort of a quick glance of what I was done. So yeah, 2011, 2012, this is when I was finishing up college. Um, so yeah, the top left is actually a character from one of my good friend's um, short stories that he wrote. So it's kind of like a practicing concept art, which was always something I've kind of been interested in. And then on the top middle, you can see I'm practicing the planar head there. That's always very valuable too. When you can understand the planes of forms, it's just gonna make, um, it's gonna make it a lot easier for you to, to render the shadows and the light, um, even for imagination. And uh, yeah, I'm actually still happy with that apple on the bottom left there. And then on the very right, you can see my Wizard of Oz fan right there. But uh, let's see, 2013. So the still life paintings here were because I had taken Noah Bradley's art camp course online, which is something that I kind of recommend. It's a good sort of boot camp to get you to uh, bust your ass on a lot of studies. Um, so those were a couple still lifes that I did for that. And then the tree on the bottom is actually me painting from my backyard. So that's a life painting. Always, always great to paint from life as much as you can. Um, the top middle, I believe, is a master study. It could be from Loomis, but I'm not sure. And then on the bottom left, of course, we got a Powerpuff Girls fan art. Um, but yeah, fan art's always a great way to sort of apply your studies because you don't really have to come up with a new concept you just have to sort of come up with something that's already been done um let's see 2014 so yeah i mean you can see here on the top left this is a master study i can't remember who the original artist is on the top right also a master study bottom left you got a self-portrait those are always great to do in the middle you can see here i've just done a bunch of figures from probably photo reference, you know, do as many of these as you can if you want to get better at anatomy and just posing figures and knowing how to balance them and gesture and all that stuff. Um, just, you need to do a ton of these. Um, and then in the bottom right, I'm studying materials. Um, I believe, who was it? Ryan Lang did a video tutorial on YouTube where he talks about materials, which I recommend watching. <coughs> So 2015, um, let's see, top left you got a master study there, bottom left is a self-portrait as a Muppet, kind of a material study there. Um, you've got a Star Wars study there, there's some head studies I did, um, and then the uh, girl in the head wrap and then the bottom right one there, those are both from photo reference. Sometimes you see on the bottom right, it's not even completely 
fully rendered and finished. It's just kind of halfway rendered. That's fine too, as long as you're, you know, practicing laying out shadows and lights and things. It's it's gonna help you out. And then the top right is actually an illustration I did for, I think, a class with Sterling Hunley or something. But yeah. Uh, 2016. These look like. Um, okay, so the bottom left actually is a master study. The two on the right are from photo reference, and then the top left is actually painted out of my window in my bedroom. So, yeah, so you've got life studies, master studies, and photo reference studies here. The only thing I'm not showing here really is any imaginative work, which I should have, but yeah, again, these are just a small selection of things I've, you know, done. But yeah, you should be doing, if you can, I mean, do at least one of these kinds of things a day and then also a sketchbook page a day or maybe work on an illustration from your imagination. But as long as you can do studies and um, work from your imagination in the same day, you know, you're gonna progress. There's no way to not progress at that point, I think. But yeah, you can see the armor is just studying materials, the girl's face, I'm studying the way her hair is painted, things like that. 2017, so, you know, we're getting pretty recent here. Um, the top left was actually one of the few times I've worked in charcoal in a long time. Um, I had seen some charcoal artists work and it just inspired me to do that sketch. But I liked how it turned out. Then the middle one there is actually from a photo reference. I took the photo actually at my workplace because it was sunset and it looked really cool. But yeah, just, you know, painting the colors of the sky. It's a lot of fun, I think. Um, top right is actually a fan art from Harry Potter. That's Hermione. And then the bottom right, more just, you know, line drawing studies. You know, the more of these you do, the better. I mean, just do a ton of them. All right, so last year here, um, so those hands on the top left are actually done in Procreate on the iPad. It's just me trying to get used to drawing in Procreate because I'm still not used to it, actually. I've been drawing in Photoshop for so long. And then on the bottom left, it's actually a still life study from my desk done in Photoshop. The middle one is actually a Grim Reaper, and I kind of learned this technique of painting with acrylic at the Illustration Academy from Jeffrey Allen Love. So it's a really simple, cool technique. Um, it's all about strong shapes. So the bottom right is actually an imaginative piece where, of course, I used reference, but um, that's an illustration about botanical beers. And then on the top right, we have another photo study. So yeah, you got life studies here, photo studies, imaginative work, um, different mediums. You know, do all this stuff constantly, and you're going to improve.